We're back for the second half of the first episode. I believe we were at a dinner party. Uh, well, we finished, unless you wanted to discuss any further on what to do when you reach Port Wanda. I was going to flash forward to reach Port Wanda. Uh, Nero will pull us Cyrax for you. a personal meeting. Oh, this would be good. <laughs> do that. <sighs> Am I to understand that you are called Cyrax, Lex? You would be correct. Do you have a particular designator you prefer? Cyrax is fine. It is what the guardsmen called me. My weapon has been in continual operation over the last year and has not seen regular maintenance beyond what I ascribe to it. Might I have you look it over, perhaps supply it with some soothing to the machine spirit or sacred machine oil? <laughs> like steepless fingers. This will be one of my functions amongst the crew. I can perform this willingly. A little puff of sacred unguents will go out, and if anybody knows, it smells like hops number nine. Gun cleaning oil, that's what it smells <laughs> like. Uh... Very reluctantly, Nero will hand over the semi-levitating heavy bolter. Yeah, I can uh, easily see what is it. I think that's Technomad, is that skill, actually. Yeah, so you can give me, so it's base plus 20, but you can have plus 10 more because it's good quality. Yeah. Well, I also have, I have Technomad as a advanced skill, so, uh, which is the maintenance of, uh, and like benedictions for technology. Yeah, okay. Let's see, I just clicked the number then. So if I fail this, this is going to be hilarious. Five degrees of success. Yeah. Holy shit. All right, so yeah, he, he maintains it beautifully. And Arthur, for the next time you use it in battle, it will count as having the reliable quality. Oh, it's already got reliable quality. Already reliable. It? Yeah, so super we'll, we'll reliable. Have, so we'll have the never jams quality then. Ah, excellent. Oh, that was uh, actually important. When he uh, when he goes when he hands it back after doing that, he'll be like, "Enough fire in the right place can solve any problem." Colloquialisms of Metallica, chapter fifty-two, verse four. I thank you for your service, Cyrex. Has the Lord Captain spoken to you about your place on the crew aboard the Hand of Calixus? He is not, but my Magos Dominus prescribed the role of Ingenia Prime to me. It is within my purview to maintain the plasma engines. Did you I know, come from Holy Riser, second only to that of Holy Mars. Did you know that there is a unique Archaeotech drive system aboard the Hand of Calixus? I have been informed, yes. It is of most interest to me. I see. I'm sure I will become familiar soon enough. You seem competent. I served as an engineer with the Katachan during the First Tyrannic War before becoming an explorator. I have much experience, though I forget my exact age. It has been quite some time. So Nero nods to that, and for Nero, the conversation is over. He's just looking for a polite way to exit. He won't even wait. What'll happen is, uh, like, well, we've been having this conversation. You've been, like, slightly outside the door. They'll just, the Mechadengite will just go and push a button. The door just shuts down, just shuts in front of you because it's like conversation has been completed and he's, he's got other stuff to do. Uh, so, yeah, I'll let you off the hook with that one. Nero's going to turn and nod to Oswald in the hallway and say, that's the one that I like best out of his new crew. Doesn't say okay, very so. much, the tech priest. Uh, well, he didn't offer me a drink, and he wasn't an asshole, so... Yeah, so, um, general background for people curious is, um, he was a engine seer with the Katachan, was it 146, during the first Tyrannic War, and then became an explorator and started, um, popping around, uh, after, like, during the, uh, Sabbath World's Crusade. 
So that's that's the uh, Gaunt's Ghost timeline, that whole sector of space. To fill those in who aren't aware. Okay. So um, Captain Feist will invite you all to the bridge for the arrival at Port Wanda. Um, so you go through the disturbing feeling of translation back into real space and then the the shields over the void glass come up and you can see in the distance port wander um, which is surrounded by ships both battle fleet calixus ships and also trader ships um it's actually quite an ugly space station um you can sort of see partially the base space station structure beneath it but it has been added to so many times and in so many different ways that it's become lopsided um you know gorsh there are just um extension arms that, that seem to do nothing there's actually there's an entire ship which has been partially integrated into the hull it's, it's kind of like a space hulk at an odd angle yeah almost almost like a space hulk you know it's um and and whereas the original um superstructure was um naval everything which has been added to it has been more sort of merchant based food comologies of Base. it's got lance weapons as well it is a defensive structure it's just a mess and yeah there are probably at least a dozen ships either docked to it in order uh the uh the it's an orbit basically and fast will say uh chew onto one of the void So, James, you're breaking up a little bit here. Commander on board. Okay, sorry, just a sec. Come on. I'll just see if there's any. I'll just see if there's anything downloading. Kick everyone off Netflix. You know, in the meantime, let's talk about um, this show's sponsor. No one, but it could be you. With Switch Prime. <laughs> well, I suppose that much is true, yes. <laughs> that wasn't what I was going for, but yeah. Is that improved at all? To the extent that you have complete sentences, yes. Okay. <laughs> what was the last <laughs> thing you picked up? Uh, you were describing bits of the station and then... That's pretty much it. Okay. Just started cutting okay. Out, so. okay. So I was simply saying that it was a mess of a state. You can fit technologies surround thousand ships. So ships. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And then all Captain Feist. Come back again. You're yeah. bad again. So I'll just try and fix this one. <laughs> Get off of Netflix now. <laughs> yeah. Stop playing Animal Crossing. No, no one is ever going to stop <laughs> playing Animal Crossing. That's impossible. Jokes on you, Sid. I never started. I'm the only one who started. Ah, neither here. did I. Fine. I don't even know. I just I just live with someone who started. That's Same. Nice. I'm surprised you haven't got sucked into it by you know. Force Panda. Earlier today, Rad was sitting on his couch. His wife was playing Animal Crossing, and he was watching my Animal Crossing stream. <laughs> that was a man screaming internally. I've had, <laughs> I've watched a bit of it just because I've had, I've been watching some, just as like background, whatever, a guy I watch, um, and I've just learned some stuff beyond like osmosis, but that's like eh, whatever. Okay. Any better? Yep. Well, you have to talk for, for a bit so yeah. we can see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've just tried to kick one of the kids off their computer. <laughs> Thank you for your Thank sacrifice, us. child. <laughs> he was playing Ray Shadow Legends. He, he should stop anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Gross. I hope you got a sponsorship deal out of it at least. <laughs> All right. As I was saying, um, Feist will organize a shuttle to take you to uh, to Port Wanda. 
And this is ADLA here is off the, the distribution. Okay. All right, so one shuttle ride later, the four of you plus Miriam, Peck, and Kios are all deposited on one of the void box of um, Mort Wanda. It's like on the inside what it looked like on the outside. Um, it's like a messy port, basically. Um, think of it just people working, going everywhere, there's cargo loads stacked up. Um, arching ceilings um, with <coughs> sorry um, multiple different sort of just doing it again uh, um, breaking yeah, up this is just me yeah this is just me no it's definitely all of us okay sorry I'll try turning it it was about to find, the right of percussive yeah, find another kid to kick off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell log everyone in. to stop playing. Look, log really into that problem. router. Throttle everyone. This is James' this time. Yeah, what we need is a QoS for 80% uh, guaranteed. So Nero is going to be <laughs> describing all the uh, local places at Port Wander to the rest of the crew kind of give them a rundown of where to go and definitely where not to go and for Garth Valance's sake he will list the crew's preferred wine bars from from things he served from other officers but mm -hmm. oh excellent he's never been there himself immediately choose the most expensive one and wander off Lord Captain don't step in that I wasn't going to that's good Around this station, it is well known for eating through your boot. Thank you. There are many dangers in Port Wonder. I know. Please know roughly. Let's see. Have you considered how we will transit to the Hand of Calixus, Lord Captain? By space? I am filled with enthusiasm that our resident Psyker is aware of how one might transit between locations. Anything I can do to help. And where's this bar at? Can you help? All right, I've done all I can do shorter. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when it cut out was a short of yeah. blank. Yeah. Yeah. Short it was the best. Out. It was literally the best place to cut it, out. It, in. it might be worth it quick. I mean, if it's the last option. I'm sure we could. I think he'd look, he's not moving. No one could say that unnaturally still. He's practically <laughs> invisible to my eyes. Yeah. It might be worth the yeah, restart, James. We could uh, talk amongst ourselves. Oh, I'm still, and... I'm still talking to the captain about mm -hmm. rogue traders, how we're going to get to the Hand of Calixis. Don't worry, I'll carry this for you. <clears throat> Lord Captain, we must acquire transit to the Hand of Calixis. Have you considered how we might do that? Yes. I'm Garth now. <laughs> I was going to see what options were there available. Usually it requires money. Mm, not in Port Wander. Money is not always the best currency. Let's see. I suppose for you, bullets would be the best currency. I find the best currency in my line of work is loyalty. Might I offer a rogue trader from whom you might find transit trustworthy? Some among the local color might see your ship in distress as a way to capture or kill you and relieve you of your possessions. I was considering not going with the rogue trader due to <clears throat> it would make it advantageous option to take me out of the way and take we the ship for themselves. We are outside of Imperial space. Yes. Does what? that mean there's zero imperial presence? 
what captains will you find that will operate outside of Imperial space that are not rogue traders that you might find trustworthy? Enos? Cultists? I find hard to see really anybody that trustworthy. I guess road triggers would be the closest thing. But... I found Joachim Saul to be a trustworthy man. As the captain says, you know, the whatever, I'm going to lean over to uh, Nero. Look at him. He is learning. I am so proud. <laughs> Joachim Saul is a man for whom trust is the primary currency. Unlike many rogue traders, his primary business is business. Just keep in mind he is likely to require a favor in return for this favor. One does not transit through this expanse for free. There was always going to be a cost. We could sacrifice him. <laughs> and the, the thing's going to point to the edge of it. I seem to be encountering a lot of people lately eager to end my life. It's most interesting. The last psyker I served with, his head popped like a ripe fruit. Yeah, I mean, Nero's just going to nod along with that. Uh, as he does, he says, I am not interested in ending your life, Master Valence. Simply that when the end comes, that your wishes are respected. It's not that we don't trust you, but we don't trust you <laughs> yet. All right, let's pop that camera order thing. You know, it wouldn't be the first episode of a stream if there were technical issues. <laughs> I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the stream. Well, this is uh, more of a Australia. Problem. I mean, it's literally <laughs> never happened before where we've had a not nice metal man at the bender. Uh, uh, so the camera <laughs> order is James said Atomic Pondo. Wow, look at that! It's like a barbershop oh. quartet, and how <laughs> snappy they went off and back on. Incredible! We're so good at this. <laughs> uh, James, we've been discussing which rogue trader, or if we could find a non-rogue trader transport to the hand of Calixus. And James is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> While that's happening, we should keep arguing among ourselves. <laughs> We're not arguing. We're just having a pleasant conversation. Ah, still cut out. I heard a can you and yeah. then a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I feel so bad for James. Master Valence. I had to kick some other kids off the internet. <laughs> you had to kick ki other kids in other houses. Get off like, the internet! Okay, I'll get off Raid Shadow Legends for five seconds. He puts all his stuff in a... <laughs> he puts all his stuff in, like, you know, a hardened thing, and this sets off an EMP. It's like, all right, everybody's gone. Master Valence, with your order, might you have any contacts or friends friends well yes and i point over to <laughs> might you have any contacts or friends among the captains of this station Oh, well, see, that's that's entirely possible, I believe. That would actually be a question, I believe, for the the GM. Yes. Whether or not, whether or not I have any contacts or the friends. The Emperor is powerful, yes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. More or less. Yes. Okay. Um, so there is a choir on Port Water that you would have you'd be able to reach out to. Um, sorry, I know we were sort of missed over at the starting bits. So the, the the points I wanted to point out are that they're apparently the navigator from the Hand of Calixis is on Port Wanda. 
Um, so you, you would know that, um, so you Nero would know that he's from uh, a navigator house called Zentai, which has accommodations on Port Wanda. Um, certainly the astropathic choir on Port Wanda could be a contact for Sid's character. Uh, there is also the Cal's household estates on the station as well. Um, and then it's up to you whether you meet with the station administrator as well. well we should at least keep, have a sit down with the navigator. I feel there might be pertinent plot points to be gained there. Yes, it was in your uh, was in your message that you received. So that is a good point to start. At the very least to find out what the hell happened. Yes. I'm curious how the senior staff was killed and not anybody else as far as the ship, as far as I know. Killed, died, disappeared. Whatever it is. Could I get everybody to make me an awareness roll, please? Just a base awareness roll. No. <laughs> uh, I don't wanna. Uh I can attempt it. I actually succeeded. I have a twenty and I because I don't have that <laughs> skill for whatever reason. Actually I know why. I wanted scru- I wanted scrutiny. Oh, I, I succeeded um, as well. <clears throat> I almost didn't Wonders fail. Wonders never cease. <laughs> Mine is not great. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Three, okay. Three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> so the, the three, the three of you notice that um, at one point when you're walking down one of the promenades of Port Wanda, up in the rafters above, there appears to be a cyber eagle um, watching your group. So this is effectively like a cybernetic eagle sitting in the rafters. It's cl- it's clearly watching you walk down the walk down the street of Port Wanda. Is it a twin-headed cyber eagle? No, a single one. Okay. We should capture that thing and name it George. Capture what thing? Does not belong to us. There's a cyber eagle up there. Where? It's like without shifting my head, I just point directly towards it. Do you have wings that you can sprout for you to catch it? How far away is it? So he turns to you, Gareth, and says, Can you take me higher to a place where blind men see? As he Before says that, we, he's going to raise his heavy bolter and point it in that thing's direction to see if it does anything. So, so to answer your question, it's probably about four stories up. Um, so when you point the, the heavy bolter at it, it takes off. It takes wing. I just okay. keep on. <laughs> Nero will just smoothly, <laughs> you know, reholster it onto his back. It, it basically flies into like a, a vent somewhere. Better than those damned cherubs. I believe someone's doing some spying. You don't know that it was following us. Don't know that it wasn't. I concur. I want to assume that it was. So the crowd in front of you begins to part as three figures come walking towards you. The lead figure is a man probably 30s, dark, slick, shoulder-length hair, pale skin, wearing like a long, black, mandarin collared coat. Um, Arthur, my, my sort of thought for this guy is he's a bit like um, from uh, Three three Houses. Um, what's his name? Uh, Adel- H- yeah, Hubert. He's like, he's like Hubert from that. Yeah. <laughs> I um, lean so- over and say, I sense three individuals approaching us. <laughs> Yes, I see um, them. The other two <laughs> stand out a lot more than he do because they're both wearing black ceramite power armor. Um, two, he's flanked by two Death Watch Space Marines. Um, one of them on his shoulder plate has a symbol of a um, blood drop on a white circular saw on a black background. And the other's shoulder plate is apparently simply black and scratched with chains and votive scrolls drawn across it to, to cover or obscure the, the symbol. 
but yeah, he's making this this guy and uh, the two Death Watch Marines are making their way towards you. Uh, do I recognize this man? No, you don't. I'm going to. Uh, I don't know that there's a way to unsurreptitiously get a heavy bolter into your hands, but I'm going to step half step in front of the captain, not completely cover him, <laughs> but half my body in front of half of his body uh, with the weapon at the ready. So the Marines have their bolters in their hands, but not pointed. They're just sort of walking with uh, like a high ready, basically. Um, the the man sort of looks, sort of tries to look past Nero towards Pierre. I mean, as soon as he does uh, it, I say, you present yourself before <laughs> Lord Captain Pierre Cowes. Oh, my apologies, Lord Captain. I am uh, Inquisitor Cassius Shrain of the Order Xenos. So I Nero, might, I might have a... Okay. Nero's going to turn and look at Cowes with his gun. Like, as he's doing it, he moves his gun to, like, the foot area of the Inquisitor. So if he does anything, he can just pull the trigger and ride it up and, you know, give him a look like... Are you good to meet with this man, or should I remove him for you? It would be wise for you to put your weapon away. He turns back to the Inquisitor and says, It would be wise for you to put your weapon away. I was away. speaking to you, Nero. I understand. <laughs> so Nero's going <laughs> to step beside him behind the captain. He's not going to put his weapon away, though. Hmm. Sorry, what was the name of this guy? Inquisitor? I don't put my gun down. You put your gun down. Cassius Shrain. Cassius Shrain. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm out of this conversation now. No. <laughs> uh, I wonder if I might trouble you for a moment of your time, Lord Captain. I don't see why not. You're already being direct by telling me who you are and where you're from, which is where among your profession. Well, when you're flanked by two Death Watch Marines, it's kind of hard to to covertly work for the Inquisition. I'm sure you understand. Have you tried not being flanked by two Death Watch Marines? It tends to help for covert operations. They they are very useful in many situations. Oh, that's not in doubt, yeah. but their usefulness in covert operations is not extreme. Hmm. Well, I don't I'd think rather... she's tr they're trying to be covert. So ah, I, well, I then, well done. Mission accomplished. I want to be clear uh, that while this is happening, Nero is... Yeah. is copying the body posture of one of the marines <laughs> the one directly facing him you're like you're like peter quill with um with, uh, <laughs> thor. <laughs> with thor yeah are you copying me exactly that's 100 percent what's happening here i am not this is the best day of his entire life <laughs> um so uh i had a arrangement so to speak, with your predecessor, your mother, I understand. And my condolences uh, for your loss. Um, I simply wanted to find out what you knew about the circumstances of her death. I'm trying to figure that out myself. And is all I've been told is that she and my siblings have essentially perished. Uh, of the sorts, at least it disappeared as far as I know. Most likely so, no longer living, yes. Yes, that's the information that I have. I'm simply trying to find out how that circumstance came to the being. Um, did you speak regularly with your mother? How was your relationship with your mother, would you say? Oh, I haven't seen or spoke with her in years, decades, decades. Yes, I don't recall you ever even sending her a birthday card when we were at college. When that happens, Nero turns and looks at Cal's like, oh shit. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with you? Did she ever speak with you about her work with the Inquisition? No, you tend to not speak about that stuff. Hmm. It being the Inquisition. And she never mentioned station 13 to you at all when no. that happens nero's <laughs> gonna try to play it cool like uh... <laughs> what is station no, she is 13 not. um 
afraid it's uh, I, I I couldn't tell you about it without there being consequences. What so what you're saying is I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. No, don't be so gauche. No, no, I'd have them kill you. Oh well, that's the same as having me <laughs> killed. Glad, glad I'm dead one way that. or another, but okay. Thank you for telling I'm me. Just kind of focused on that. I like this guy. I would pay Throne Guild to watch the flesh chair that rip that astropath apart. It would be most entertaining. Um, the relationship that I had with your mother, that sounds worse than it meant to sound. The arrangement that I had with your mother uh, was with her. Um, it, it is not a matter of your dynasty. I simply need to make sure that certain elements of information security are maintained uh, now this relationship has ended. So I would appreciate it if you came across anything you think would be pertinent to the Inquisition that you make contact with me. Of course. Uh, I will be on Port Wanda for some time. I have other operations to be engaged in here. So if you are traveling through Port Wanda and you found out more about the circumstances relating to your mother's death and if it is related to, if, it's, if it would be of any interest to me, I would appreciate you contacting me here. Uh, he gives you like a Vox frequency you can use. Uh, he'll take the Vox frequency. I think he like instinctively motions for a kiosk to get it, but kiosk is probably not there at the moment. Uh, he's probably well. He's probably organizing for your baggage to be taken to your for you, to your quarters yeah. here, basically. Yeah. It's like uh, just just and then just take him himself. Hmm. <clears throat> I'll, definitely... I'll be sure if anything comes to mind or comes comes to my site. Let's see, I'll definitely have taken it down regardless. <laughs> Make it right, pulls out a data slate, and it's just like beep, boop, 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 and just puts it away. Well, I will wish you a good day or evening, whatever time it is. It's so hard to tell on space stations. Uh, all the best, and good Can luck with your watch? exploits in the expanse. Yes. He turns to leave. The, the space marines turn. You notice, um, probably Nero will notice that the the, the black the black shield. As he turns, he sort of eyes Nero, um, and like he like he, his gaze lingers long enough that he's clearly sort of examining Nero. But then he, he continues to turn and keeps walking with the others. But how many bolter fire rounds does it take to take down that man down? Seven point five. <laughs> Lord Captain Cows. Yes. I am not certain your level of political training. What do you mean? I do not wish to be impertinent, Lord Captain, but an inquisitor who comes bearing smiles and treating you affably, asking for information rather than extracting it, is not a man to be trusted or taken at face value. Yes, I know. I simply wished to confirm this with you. No, I... Oh, it's quite, quite obvious that the man has a secret and he's wishing to make certain the secret is not being shared, but at the same time, he doesn't want to raise more of a scene than would necessarily be warned such a thing. Uh, I think the conversation that... went quite well. No one you died. had a conversation and no one was shot. Yeah. Yes, quite well indeed. We we're discussing anything else that could be overheard by surveillance eagles or anything of the sort. We should probably keep moving. Find this navigator. See what he knows. Which navigator? The navigator for my mother. The navigator from the Lord Captain is here. Yes, the navigator from Pride of Cali was it Han Hand, Hand of Calixus. Hand, Hand, Hand of Calixus is here in port. We should seek them out. Why is he alive? I don't know. I want to find out myself. Navigators are quite you know, valuable. You know precisely as much as I do in that in that regard. Why do you believe that I would have more information than you on as to how he's still alive? I will repeat: navigators are quite valuable. Yes, but the rest of the senior staff are dead, including the Lord Captain, who is yes. more valuable than a navigator. Well, then we'll have to ask him. To we? us, yes. To someone taking a ship, no.
My guess is that maybe he's a coward. I'm... This is a distinct That's... possibility. That is a possibility. My other guess is that of other deemed that he did not need to come. They did not need to come. Or maybe they didn't want him to come. So, uh, sorry, my cool. understanding as a player was that the navigator was the only survivor of the incident and has been brought back here. He's the only one who's been brought back. There are other survivors yes. still on the ship. Yes. He's the only one that was brought back. Yeah. So uh, Nero is going to say, I stand by my point. Why is he the only member of the senior crew still alive? Well, that is a question that we must seek answers to now, isn't it? Lord I Captain, propose, I, I propose this a theory. talking is making me rather dry. Perhaps we could sw- perhaps we could stop by a wine bar before seeking out this navigator. I'll kind of, I want to kind of gra- like grab Nero and Captain. I propose a theory. What if it is a trap? Lord Captain, I commend Traps you in following in your mother's footsteps in regards to information security. Uh, keeping this from the rest of your senior staff here until the dramatic reveal is a move that your mother would have also performed with a plum and a cape swish. Yes, I need to invest in a cape. Thank you are wearing hand. a cape. You described yourself as having one four weeks ago back at the party. I have a different... Nothing, I'm not wearing that cape now. I'm in a dirty place. You know, I see. clean... Indeed, you can't. You, also, you can't wear the same cape twice. This you is have a man the, of social standing. You, after you have a walking cape standards. and a swishing cape. Like there's, there's different densities of cape. The swishing cape is standards easier to uphold. Do you think I wear the same cape every single time? No. How do you know it is a different not cape? Done. <laughs> Meanwhile, So the plan is to head to... So the, you know where the Navigator households are on Port Wanda? Yes, I'll leave so, them so, there, so... Okay, so Z- Zantai is the... So you, so you would know, Nero, that the navi- the chief navigator on board the Hand of Calixus was a man by the name of Izarin Zantai. Izarin Zantai? Now, have yeah. I ever actually spoken with this guy? We haven't talked about what my role was on the Hand of Calixus. Yeah, so beyond you, so, just general murder guy. So I would Ed say that on the, you were one of several experienced armsmen. So you weren't like the head um, of her okay. personal guard to tell. You were one. You were an experienced member, but you were not. You, know, you reported to somebody who reported to her. So you probably encountered the navigator on one or more occasions, but never really had any business dealings with. And the navigators tend to keep to themselves. But I can confirm well. if I'm looking at this guy yes. whether okay. yeah, you'll know. Yeah, for sure you know it's him. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Um. So the district of the navigators is like they're like navigator houses are like noble houses. So once again, it's a bunch of mansions. Um, with that being said, every sort of doorway is inscribed with hexagramic ruins. Ruins, runes to make sure that you know if there is some sort of warp fuckery going on inside, it doesn't escape the household. Um, the Zantai household is a lot less um, ostentatious than the other navigator households. In fact, their premises looks more like a, a motel or, or a flop house, basically. Um, uh, it's more sort of uh, a place that you can sort of come and stay for a few days and then head on again. Um, but once again, it does have this, the same wards and the same sort of, you know, there's a, a bell to ring for the, uh, for the navigators. Presumably someone rings the bell. Oh, and while you, while you're waiting for the door as well, you get a, a Vox communication Pondo from Kios, um, letting you know that he's reached your family's holdings and you've got into basically deposit your, your luggage. But it does appear that the the place has been tossed. Like it's that someone someone has messily searched the place. So he's gonna he's not gonna touch anything until you get a chance to get here. Excellent. Thank you for letting me know. Willing to bet our inquisitor friend is to blame for that one. So the door opens. Um, there is a man probably in his fifties with a pair of like Pisner's glasses, little glasses that sit right on the nose, um, in like sort of a, a a afternoon suit, um, not a navigator. You can see he's, he's actually balding on top, so his head is, is fully unobscured, and he's not not, not a navigator. Um, looks more like a sort of clerical or administrative person. Um, yes, Lord yes, Captain Pierre you? calls to see his navigator, Izarin. 
oh, um, come in, come in, please. And he sort of leads you into like a little, like an antechamber room um, with like a reception desk, basically, and goes and sits down there. Um, Lord Isarin is not in right now. Where is he? His captain requires him. Uh, he, he sort of like, he, he uncomfortably adjusts his collar. He's uh, on some personal time. He has not authorized this with the Lord Captain. Uh, very well. Where is he taking said personal you'll f- guy? You'll find him at a bar in the Hall of the Dead known as the Spent Round. A bar? Excellent. Why didn't you say so? Why is the alcohol going to be the, the sandwiches of the series? <laughs> you didn't pick it up yet? <laughs> No, I've been picking it up. I'm just now confirming it. He's been picking it up. He prefers not to put it down, though. Look, it's partially it's partially Sid's fault that he is a, he he got a marine addicted to pierogies. All right, so let's you know. Explain to us how 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 this man has reacted since he's gotten back into the station. Uh, he's spent a lot of time at the bar. Has he now? Has he been meeting with anyone? Uh, I mean, he does. He has accommodations here. He has come back. He comes back here when they kick him out. Um, he's kept to himself mostly. Has anyone else been seeking him out? Um, there was a man, an inquisitor, I think, who came to speak with him. Of course, there was. Thank you very much. You've been most helpful. Well, thank you for the information. If he does come back by the time we leave, or maybe get to home, uh, please let us know. And, and do uh, not allow him to leave. Yes. That too. Very well, Lord. I'll hey, give her my Vox information. To he, yeah, no worries. Hey, give him the Vox information. Yeah. Let's be off to this. Oh, uh, Lord Captain, one thing before you go. Yes. I He told me that the previous Lord Captain was deceased. Does, does the warrant continue? Are you, will, you be re, re, will you be retaining control of the Hand of Calixus? Yes. Very well. I'll, um, I will make a note so that we can ensure that the proud history of our house and your dynasty continues. Thank you. I'm your humble servant, sir. Um, I like hand over a, a, a Vox code. Please do be a good boy and notify us immediately if that Inquisitor should turn back up again. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Right, now, you escort- on to the bar. Okay, Nero just leads them there, but the whole time he's just dying on the inside. The astropath wants to get blind drunk. Uh, wow, wow. Uh, I see myself out. He's already halfway there. James, so, as soon as we always. enter this place, Nero's going to zero in on this guy and just be like, you are absent without leave. The Lord Captain requires you immediately. They already wandered off to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the Hall of the Dead is a large section near the center of the station, which is a, a vaulted area of, of mainly mercantile shops and street markets. Um, carved into the walls of the dome of this section are uh, the faces of every road trader who's lost their life um, searching the expanse. So they sort of look down upon the people that, that, that follow in their stead. Um, so presumably, the, uh, you know, arrangements will be made to have your mother's visage carved up there as well. Um, the spent round is pretty much a dive bar. It's a place that, you know, voidsmen can go to buy cheap ale. Um, you head inside and it's pretty easy to spot Zantai in, in the bar. So he's sitting in a booth in a corner. Um, his robes are ragged. He's, he's got his sort of headscarf on that covers his third eye, but it's also, it's disheveled to the point that like he's, he's almost close to accidentally exposing the, you know, the, the closed lidded eye. Um, yeah, there are several weird looks from the bartenders asking for the, the wine menu. 
<laughs> there are several empty <laughs> bottles of, of um, Amasek in front of him and everybody is giving him a really wide berth. Like everyone's really uncomfortable with a drunk navigator sitting in their bar um, downing drinks. Um, yeah, so Garth goes to the bar. You march straight up to him. You are you absent Nero? without leave, navigator. The he looks up. Trader requires your immediate report on the state of the ship. Uh, Nero, right? Nero is going to uh, say yes, but in the process, he's basically uppercut, grabbing this guy's collar and lifting him out of his seat. Yeah. You will report so, to the Lord Captain immediately. So for those of you who've seen this guy for the first time, he is um, quite old. Um, so he's, he's got a sort of um, uh, Dumbledore style look about him, just like long gray beard, um, uh, long hair, but sort of, but sort of loose at the front, but with the bandana on, um, wearing navigator's robes. He's also like seven foot five. Um, he's very tall, but also like stick thin. Um, and uh, yeah, so when, even when you pick him up, like his feet still touch the ground when you lift him, you know, to to like a, a, a yeah. I'm not trying to like choke yeah. ch ch Darth Vader him, but <laughs> choke him. Yeah, yeah, I'm just getting him moving immediately. Yeah, okay. now. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, you can also tell like yeah, there's there's vomit on his robe as well. His own, Master Elder. I have respect for both your age, your wisdom, and your service. But the Lord Captain requires your report immediately. Shall I splash the, water on your face to prepare you, or can you pull yourself together? The Lord Captain's dead, Nero. She's dead. Yes. They're all dead. There's a new Lord Captain now. And he will gesture yeah. to Cal's. Yeah. He, he, sort of, he sort of thinks. And like, when he, when it, like, there's a moment where realization dawns, and he tries to like, brush himself off you know like he just ends up like you know it's like slobbing dry vomit on that further down his robes i mean he's, he's making it like a, a drunken effort nero's to... gonna get like a bar of wet wipe for him and like help him out a little bit yeah. yeah um you're at the bar as well um garth um ordering you know, asking about wine and it's it's like that scene in the simpsons like beer wine b-e-e-r no, um is that is that navigator with you? Oh, which navigator would that be? The one navigator in here. The one over there being manhandled by that guy with all the weapons. Oh, I would imagine so, yes. Do you have any... any... Huh, probably needs it, yeah. Do you have anything here that would help sober him up a bit? So <laughs> looks right out of the bar. Um got water i know it's a bit counterintuitive for a, a bar to offer <laughs> such yeah, thing. If, if it'll get him, if, it'll, if it'll get him out of here i've got i have got some some recaf i can i can get ready for him that would be yes. most appreciated thank you very much right. <clears throat> also beans your wine selection is rather limited what do you have by way of whiskey i've I've got some gin. Would you happen to have Sakra? <laughs> gin will do fine. <laughs> All right. He serves you some spirits of some type anyway. It's once again, it's a dive bar. The quality is not fantastic. <laughs> I like yeah. taking and, and one sip and then just... I also want some. But I what I do, what not, I do I don't finish it. What happens is a mechadendrite reaches out, grabs it, pulls it into the robe, and then hands it back, and it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> Master Izarin, have you pulled yourself together? Yes, yes, yes. Please and and make I'll, your I'll report immediately. I'll bring if, the recaf over. If he hasn't, I'm sure we can get the Medicaid to give him some detox. He might vomit upon himself, but he will definitely be sober. I'll just hand him the. Drink this. All right. So you guys presumably slide into another booth, which is not the one he was at, you know, to, to talk. It was not for a government list there. booth, so yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Lord Captain, <laughs> I present <laughs> Master Izarin Zantai. Your finest vomitless booth, if you please. 
Captain, I uh, I remember you as a child when you came aboard the hand many years ago, but it's been a long time. I apologize about my condition. I, I've i not been well. How are Take you? Take another cautious sip of the gin and then just make a disgusted face and push it away from me. And grab it. <laughs> And do the same thing again. <laughs> <laughs> the you know, Lord the Captain is waiting for your report. Is he is Bondo frozen? Yes. He is frozen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, it's not Extremely. me frozen. I wonder if he's I wonder if I wonder if Cotton's playing Rage Halo Engines. <laughs> she is playing uh, Animal Crossing, almost certainly. I can basically guarantee it. Cotton playing Animal Crossing? Surprise Pikachu face. Been a night. Right. <laughs> oh. uh, give it, we'll give him a sec. The whole oh. system just kind of... There he is. I'll it repeat again and say... <clears throat> Master Isrin, the Lord Captain yes. is awaiting your report, not your pleasantries. Yes. Um, Drink your cash. He has a sip. So the Hand of Calixus has been traveling back and forth for some time between this world, Regina Four, that uh, the Lord Captain discovered and Port Wanda. Uh, from what I was told, on the surface of Regina Four, a void ship was discovered, an ancient imperial design, which is irregular as uh, the Imperium itself never reached this far beyond the Halo Stars. Uh, but this was a, uh, a, a pre-heresy era uh, construction, a, a, a battle cruiser, I think, Chalice, Chalice class. Um, it had been lawn upon the planet's surface for millennia. Um, your mother became obsessed with attempting to restore the vessel to some form of operation. She began cleaning out her accounts to pay for parts to be flown in from Port Wanda to Regina to begin restoring the ship. She even began having some of the crew of the hand begin salvaging parts of the hand to send down to the surface. She moved a lot of the crew down there as well in order to, um, to work on this ship. Um, there was a, a period for which everything seemed to be other than her, her fervor, be going well and then a few weeks before the merchant ship arrived um something happened down there from what i heard um or what the what the vox traffic said was um the lord captain turned on everybody began killing everybody um indiscriminately slaying them all uh once everything had ended those of us still on the ship sent a crew down in one of the remaining shuttles to find what had happened only to find the dead littering the ship and your mother dead by her own hand, her children dead by her hand as well. The, without the biological signature of your family to, to, to activate the command throne aboard the Hannah Clicks, we couldn't return back to Port Wanda. So when the merchant ship arrived, um, I encouraged the crew to return to Port Wanda with me, but you know how these clan kin type are, they wouldn't leave the ship behind. Those that were still there chose to stay and keep it running as long as they could. What is the status of the remaining crew? I'd say about 20% complement still survive. Um, thankfully, um, the world itself was, uh, the human civilization was to a farming stage. And so we we're able to resupply the uh, food holds. So I'd say that as long as the, the voidsmen on board the hand still had access to a shuttle, they can resupply their food from, from the Regina four colony. Um, they could potentially continue living out their lives there for some time, but the ship's not going anywhere without, without a cows to, to remove the bio lock. Uh, I think that at this point, Nero is going to snatch the bottle yep. from Garth and pour out two shots to drink. Oh no, I had just gotten a glass and I, I pushed it away and that was already 
been claimed. Then there's there's no gonna, alcohol in front of will acquire such a bottle and drink two shots and then allow the tech priest and the astropath to consume the rest of it. Oh, I'm not going to drink that. Are you insane? <laughs> uh, you don't know what I'm doing with it. Very well, I would like to return to the Hand of Calixis in order to hopefully investigate further what caused my mother to go insane and what it sounds like. You should join us, Navigator. My lord, I... I am old. I was privy to some things that your mother was involved in that I could not speak of. Things that involve the Imperial Inquisition. Station 13? Indeed. Um, things that I have... That we, that I, I remember that my, 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 my loyalty first is to House Zantai and then to the road traders that Zantai supports. Um, I have to protect my house. I can't speak of these things. And Damn. there are memories aboard the hand. Things that... The last years have been tough. With your leave, I would like to retire my service, but I will organize for a fresh navigator from House Zantai to be supplied, as is my family's agreement with your dynasty. That would be lovely. I'm more curious about this thing that you're not telling us about, navigator. I believe it's a situation where if he told us, he would have to kill us, and then probably himself. No. You know what I am. Yes. Yes. You know that if I truly wish to get this information, I could. Yes. And that would be your crime, and not mine. Is... I will ask you this. Will any of this information that you're withholding us withholding from us present any possible risk of harm? No. To... No. The, uh, the former Lord Captain learned some things and because of her knowledge of that, she was pressed into service of the Inquisition. Without that knowledge, you will not be subject to the same service. In fact, you're probably safer not knowing it. Very well. That is, that is all I was genuinely concerned about. Rest at ease. I will not seek. I will not search your mind. Thank you for your forthrightness. Very well. Shall I return to House Santai and make arrangements for a fresh navigator? Yes. Very well. He stands up and then immediately falls over. <laughs> and then stands up again. <laughs> Nero is going to help him stand up and say, before you go, what did you tell the Inquisitor? Uh, the Inquisitor's interest was only in the keeping of his secrets. I told he knew about the, the ship. Nero, I... I simply told him that something had happened that had killed the crew and the rogue trader. I didn't say that, that, um, that she had done it, nor did I tell him about the, the things in my head. Speak no further on those things. Very well. Thank you for your service to the Lord Captains. Question. The simple fact, Navigator, of your knowing these secrets and the Inquisitor's desire to wish these secrets to remain secrets, I'm a little bit concerned about your own safety. Have you given Sorry. thought that while he may wish the situation to be contained for now, he may end up choosing to take more 
direct methods of information suppression in the future. That's always a risk, but all I can hope is that the value of my house to the Imperium means that this Inquisitor will not take hasty actions. Well, if you believe yourself to be safe, I'll leave it at that, but... I've been to the Expanse. To... None of us are safe. You seem to be in earnest, and I would hate for someone who is being forthright to come to an untimely end when one does not deserve one. Should be noted that when he said that, Nero was just nodding like, yep, preach. <laughs> At the end of the day, if my life buys safety for my house, then that's what has to be. House first. Sorry, Emperor first, house second. Very well. All right, he will shakingly leave the bar. I like sniff the shot and then put it back down and push it away. <laughs> Thought I'd do that, but no. Next, we should go someplace where we can get a decent drink. What, Captain? I'm not certain Next it is my place to advise you further, but 20% crew compliment will not run the Hand of Calixis. Yes. Sounds like we may need some shit shovelers. I have checked with which rogue traders might be available to provide us with transit or possibly crew members. I have several suggestions for you in that regard. So did you see I put into yes. the chat? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. All right. <clears throat> Allow me before I present such a list, if you wish it, to ask how do you feel about courtship? Courtship? Yes, and you might be aware, but rogue traders are expected to have children. <gasps> You're going to be getting married? Well, I don't think anytime soon. I see. Take that as a no. That's a shame. Why bring this up now? As that happens, he goes to his list and scratches House Armelon off the list. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you understand that, you know, marriages as a, as a form of tying two houses together, a time-honored tradition. Again, why bring this up now? No reason. I don't believe that, but sure. There are... Rogue traders within this sector that exist who might be pliable to such favors. An offer of house unions or something along those lines. If you're not prepared for something like that, Lord Captain, I understand. Your mother was different in that regard. Wouldn't be a bad idea, though. Yeah, seeing how I'm the last of the cows at the moment. You have a sister, Lord Captain. That doesn't count. Nero turns to look at Garth like, what the fuck? <clears throat> I mean, she was tithed, so she's not really technically part of the family anymore. Oh, okay. So I still have a sister. <laughs> what was she tithed to? The Emperor. The, Ecclesi the Ecclesiarchy. Okay. That's it. I would suggest among the rogue traders present Captain Garrett, Captain Grimald, or Captain Winterscale if you really, really like big ships. Captain Grimald has found herself in over her head and might be easy to manipulate. If you're still looking for that courtship thing, which you are not, then I will not suggest Captain Armelin. 
as a obvious match for you. Is he's a guy? No. <laughs> Do you, you get a message, Pondo, by the way, from Miriam, letting you know that she's organized the requirements to ceremonially hand, ceremonially hand over the, the warrant of trade when you're ready to let her know. She'll set it up. <laughs> Just got a data slate of all the road traders. He's having to swipe left, swipe right. <laughs> road trader tender. <laughs> road Look, man. Road tender. <laughs> oh, Your questions are between <clears throat> whether you wish to find someone that is easily manipulated or someone who is of honor but will require greater service of you down the line, Lord Captain. I'm guessing one Grimald would be the easy manipulated, and then Armelon would be the high of honor. Even those who clean garbage scows know of the easiness with which one can make trick Captain Grimald. I feel like that's not the wisest decision for if one person can easily manipulate, so could another. You just all have to kill them. All you require is transit from one location to another, do you not? This is not true. a complicated exchange, Lord Captain. Transport is only part of our problem. We require crew. Yes. I might be able to requisition some adepts and servitors, but it will not be enough. I feel like we'll need those regardless due to the Archaea tech within this hand of Calixus and also the deal that my mother was working on. I have some interest in it, though, despite the foreshadowing of the nature that it can cause. Well, Captain, I would hasten to caution you against dealing with this ancient Imperial void vessel. Yes. The Inquisitor has made it clear that he has staked this situation out. If you were to get involved, it would be following in your mother's footsteps, which is not a total issue, except I do not believe that you could wear her heels quite so well. It would be a bit awkward. You are not her, and there are other courses that you might plot. <laughs> if you Imagining wish to the be... captain wearing high heels is most perturbatory. <laughs> if it is a course that you wish to follow, then that is one that we will follow at your behest. However, there are other routes available. I have one such plot I have been working on in my spare time. One through which you might find ample crew members. Very well. Best if we were to speak about this somewhere privately with your senior staff. Yes. Uh, James, does any of the Rogue Trader names seem familiar to... Uh, to Pierre? Um, probably, so, well, certainly Winterscale is a famous name because Winterscale, a whole section of the Expanse is named after his family. Okay. Um, of the remaining ones, probably the only other one that's of, of significant note is Fell. Um, the others are all relatively recent. So once again, you weren't expecting to be the rogue trader, so you weren't probably spending too much time researching the competition. But I mean, what, what was in that, what's in that word document I sent you before is sort of, is general knowledge. Okay. So, yeah. Then it would probably behoove me to go for ones that aren't as known. I mean, I have made my suggestions of Garrett, Armelin, Grimald, and Winterscale. The um, yeah, the other ones that are more known are definitely going to be hard. They're definitely going to play a harder ball than yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go with Armelin. Why not? Grimald, I'm worried about her being too moldable. So Nero circles the now crossed off our melon line and writes a heart with a question mark next to it. <laughs> Very well, Lord Captain. I will make the arrangements. Thank you. Lord Captain, might I add that you should receive a seneschal or someone to do these immediately. This is 
really beyond my skill set. Yes, I will look for hiring one immediately. I traditionally shoot people. Yes, I, I realize this. I am pleased that the Lord Captain has read my resume. Yes. Well, you have a resume? I thought you bolted The main line of it is, has a big gun. I mean, he will produce a resume from a, a pack, from the pack behind him, that just includes a list of all of, not battles, all of the wars he survived. Uh, you know, there's three wars listed with a breakdown of battles, patrol routes, number of people confirmed killed, number <laughs> of people suspected killed, number oh, of so rounds fired. I'll just pretend like I didn't see it. <laughs> uh, I will shoot a kiosk a message to see if he can find someone that could be a temporary sort of secretary type of deal. Yep. So he can go. He can go look for that if you want. If you have him leave the house. Kiosk is like, yes, uh, but I'll you still my... have me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always my, be with you, sir. Needs he's an my agent. butler. He buttles. He's not secretary. He's Buts. a sec. Uh, we'll we'll head to the house, go investigate what they search through, and then uh, have him say go out while we're there. Since he's waiting for us, for us to get back to the house before he touches anything. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like killing him inside, seeing the mess, and not being able to touch it. All right. So you start making your way towards the uh, the. Look quarter. So, the inside of Port Wonder is very maze-like. The way it's been added to, to, you know, bit by bit means that it's not. There's no rhyme or reason to its layouts, and sometimes you've got to go through, you know, weird sections to get to. You, know, you might be in one noble district to get to another noble district. You've got to go through like an engineering section. Um, as you're making your way through, everybody, give me an awareness roll, please, once again. Oh boy, I can't wait to fail this again. Um, can I have the bonus from my service goal on this? Yeah, I'll give you plus ten for that. It's fine. Yeah, because I haven't set up. I haven't set up with the aspects. What a fail! Which is Damn. ten, I think. <laughs> I failed, but not not as bad. Oh, oh, it's not as bad as. No, we all those. failed. Point three. Let me double check that it's plus ten. I think it is. Note to self: invest in awareness and dodge. Hmm. Sorry. Shame that. I, uh, I thought I had awareness already, but I didn't. Sorry. I'm pretty sure it's only 10, but. Uh, Servo skull. It is. Oh, oh great. That is totally this awesome. Is a, this is a map. Are we getting combat? That does look like a map. Oh, it's a plus 20 bonus, so I would have passed. Okay, so Five as you're making your way right through the corridors, um, you see a group of individuals with weapons drawn up ahead waiting to ambush you. Um, with the one degree of success, I will give you, like, effectively, you guys can draw weapons for the start, but then it's about the most you can actually. At least we don't get caught flat footed. Yeah. Okay. Whew, thank you, Servo Skull. <laughs> always, always put the aspects in the Servo Skull. Yeah, I'll 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 definitely let people know that there's some there's yeah. some living things around like around the corner. I can't so tell. Everybody else that. gets a factional, and I just get a gun. <laughs> so I'll be I'll be I'll be pulling out my stub automatic then. I mean, I already have my gun out. <laughs> so. The uh, Auspex thing is kind of like the the scanner from Aliens. You know, oh. shows a little blips. It's kind of what it it's kind of what it is. Um. I take out my plasma pistol because why not? Yeah, I remember going Actually, that. Do these people seem armored at all. Um, they're wearing just like they, they look like gangers or like just thugs. They are wearing like a flat coat, basically. So where are we at? Basic armor. Oh, there we are. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll ready my. Uh... I'll take out the plasma pistol. Yeah, there's probably some definite wine as two plasma weapons charge up. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, they're they carrying a mishmash of las guns, shotguns, or pistols. And uh, they look intent upon violence. 
Sounds like I'm so, about to get me a free pistol. Is it? Let's have a violence. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of roll. For uh, yes, yeah, sir. Is it intel? What, how are we? So it's a D10 plus the your agility bonus. Yeah. So yeah, D roll. No special is... intelligence no. deal. Unless, okay, we unless, unless anybody. Yeah, yeah sorry, I don't have that, that trait. Yeah, there are a couple of talents like that. Uh, I don't so, have it on my character. Yeah. So I'm rolling. Uh, All right, Nero was four, not set up for teamwork. Fourteen. That's one, yeah. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, I, uh, you can put me on the thing. Is it intelligence or is it agility? It's agility. Agility, agility bonus. Okay. Yeah, so it'd be D10 plus like mine's D10 plus four. Gotcha. Unless so when somebody buys that a talent that changes that, that's fine. But we don't have that yet. Um, uh, yeah, I don't remember the. And do we get one? I'm going from two. Okay, see, there we go. Excellent. I have uh, mine's a 14, by the way. So I'm using the 14, is it? Yeah, I forgot to put the plus four on there. Okay. okay. Okay, so it starts off with you, Cyrex, because, nice. because you know, your, your, your survey scholar led you to this fact that there are eight guys with weapons drawn about to attack. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's like there's a last second where I was like, you have eight people armed ahead. And they're already <laughs> armed ahead of you. <laughs> like, yeah, the, thanks. The thing just goes off. <laughs> Duck. Why? Duck. <laughs> Shots ring out. Um, let's see. I think. Uh, I'm not going to use my largest implant because it'd be a little, little much right now. I could, but I'm not going to. All right. I'm just going to blast the first guy I see. So, I mean, I've got 90 meters of range. So these are boxes. I'm going to blast this guy right here with my plasma gun. Uh, no modifier. Oof. Missed. Big oof. Might get the shit out of it though. Okay, so it's a miss. Yep. Yeah, so you, you blow a hole in the, the wall beside him. Okay, Nero. The wall behind him melts in the slag. So, uh, aiming is a half action for plus 10. It is, yes. And the suspenser mm -hmm. makes fully automatic with the weapon. You don't it's, have to brace for It's auto brace, yeah, no, but it brace. also says it gets fully automatic as a half action. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I can aim and then fire, correct? You can't you can't combine an aim you can't combine combine an aim with a burst. There's ah, no benefit okay. for it. Yeah, yeah. I see. Um no. let's talk about intimidating then. Like can yes. I super murder somebody and then be like, maybe you should turn around and not do this? Yeah, so what you could do is you could effectively do your shot as a half action and then I'll give you a bonus to intimidate based upon how effective your shot is as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which one of these is the Lord Captain? The front left-hand one? Yeah. All right, then yeah. I'm going to shoot this guy real, real bad, like incredibly okay. badly. So let me see here. I got, That's what you say. I get a plus 20 for the... Burst. And then plus 10 for... Did you, did you take Weapon Master Heavy or? Yes, Weapon Master okay. Heavy. So yeah, so I think 90% is your likelihood of hitting them. Well, geez. Uh, that's plus 30. Yes, so you 90%. can only critically fail. Got it. But I'm reliable <laughs> and I don't jam for this combat, so. Yeah. What was the, the bonus I gave him? Yeah, he's got, yeah, never jams. Oh, oh yeah. Dude. Wow. <laughs> Still almost missed. <laughs> I got it. Right. I got right. it. You're, you're on exactly a 90. Well. <laughs> Look, you hit okay. it, you hit it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you... Okay. So 17 damage. It's pin five. So he only gets these three. So he takes 14 wounds. That's enough to blow that guy away. All right. He's, yeah. Okay. So give me an intimidate roll now. I'm going to give you a plus 20 on this roll. Uh, all right. I mean, let me double check to make sure I don't get anything else. This is. Can we assume that this is a combat topic before I start? <laughs> Yes. Yep. Uh, Nero is going to look around and say, you've chosen the wrong place to host this ambush. Remove yourself immediately. You've come to the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. Right, you, won't, you, you won't get the bonus <laughs> for the hand of clicks, though, because he, they don't know you're from the hand of clicks. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to be like, we're from the hand of clicks, bitch. You did just paste a guy <laughs> with a heavy weapon. That's pretty convincing. Uh, sorry, did you say plus 20? Plus yeah. 20. Plus 20. Okay. 
Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh my God! They killed Frank. All right. The pace of so, Frank. What are you talking about? <laughs> them. So one degree. I will say that uh, the guy up in the top corner here, he flees through this door up here, completely panicked and runs off. He now, do I have any movement, or is that a half action or something? That's a half action as well. All right. Then I simply blast this dude, and then look at my weapons, smoking barrels, and be like, "Yep, that worked." Yep. Okay, um, so uh, this guy here, um, I don't know if I do the, the line again. I do the line again. It's, um, just... uh, hit Q, and then you can flip and switch to the real one. Should be Q. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's... This guy up here shooting at Pondo. He is going to burst his last gun. That's this so nice. So... People underestimate the last gun, man. It'll fuck you up real quick. I learned that in the war, especially yeah. with the... That is a oh, complete okay. miss. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, this guy here will run to the corner there, and then he will burst fire his pistol at Pondo. Fair enough. James is like, what if the sorry, main sorry, character sorry, died? Single shot, single shot, sorry. <laughs> the single first shot, episode. <laughs> Oh, uh, that is a hit. So, five damage with no pen. I'm pretty sure your armor will absorb that entirely. Uh, I have six armor. Oh, yes. Uh, Look, yeah, AP, if it. he loses a limb between the chief medica and myself, we can fix it. I'm afraid okay. of what you might do with what's left. We have the technology. Yes, we can uh, rebuild him. Body six. <laughs> it's pretty much all pieces are six. This guy is attempting to stab you with a big knife. Oh my god, I want to pull out my big knife. It's because I'm well-dressed, isn't it? Now I'm that's sure a the, knife. This is discrimination. Charging. So what's funny, AP, is I have a Katachan knife, and Katachan knives are essentially swords. Oh, this one actually do some damage. Wow, he rolled a one. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, Goodbye, so 11, 11 damage, so... He's got no no penetration. So, what's your total armor plus um, toughness? Uh, it's... Should show on your character. What's your, what's your, what's your toughness bonus? You're in the same armor. Six plus four. So my ten. Is yeah, 40. six plus four, so ten. So you take one wound. Yeah. Ow! Wow, that's wow. That was not a lot. He made you bleed your own no. blood. No one makes me bleed. Nobody <laughs> makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> okay. Uh, this guy here can only see he'll take a shot at Nero. Uh, well, he'll do a, a burst fire with his last gun. Oh, so he's not shooting at me? No, because there's a guy in front of you now. Oh, okay. I'm well, I mean, you could just mark this uh, guy it's a miss. Oh my god, okay. I just found out something I can do, and I'm so doing this. Okay, that guy moves, and... <laughs> I can attach a weapon to my arm. Okay, they've acted... Pierre, there is a guy in front of you stabbing you in your fleshy bits. Fleshy bits. Uh, can I still use a pistol in close range combat? Yes. Oh, uh, you can. Okay, I was just making sure it was still applied. Uh, I'm guessing I can't take an aimed action to shoot. That is correct. Like, yeah. Just plasma him in his face. Yeah, I'll just, I guess, go ahead and plasma, attempt to plasma, plasma him in his face. Yes. Barely. Just nope. barely. I can't. But not a critical him. miss. Sorry? No. You can't okay. take the same you can't take the same action in one turn, so you can't attack twice or something. Okay. You you could draw a second weapon or um move, disengage, etc. But yeah, you can't take the same action twice in a turn. Yeah. Um... There are there are talents that give you kind of a multi attack thing where you attack. Multiple times as part of one action, but you got to buy those yeah. talents. Yeah, I'll go ahead yep. and disengage then. Okay, so you just move, move back one meter, basically, out of out of range. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, Goth. Oh well, he moved out of uh, melee range with that guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot that guy, and I'm gonna okay. take an aimed action. Yep. So it. that's plus ten. To me. I fail miserably. Sorry, miss. All right, Cyrax. 
<laughs> I rolled um, both for that. So <laughs> I can. Uh, I want to charge this guy. Can I draw my power axe as part of that movement? Uh, you can, yes. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to charge the guy that was attacking uh, Pierre. So, I mean, it's diagonal, but it'd be. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you move at least two meters, you're fine. Okay, yeah, no, I'll charge him. And then it's, what was the... Um... Plus 20 for a charge. Okay, yes. It's me like you. All right, yep, power axe versus knife. <laughs> oh, that's a hit, yeah. Oh, that's a nat <laughs> one. <laughs> nat one as well, yep. 20, 23 damage. Okay, wow. you, you, cut that, you cut that guy in half. Yeah. 27, 23 <laughs> damage. First, our first crit success, boys. Right, yeah. Cool. So, so we we did, we actually hit him in the in the body. You rolled a you rolled a natural one. So you hit him in the head. So you, yeah. you, you even oh. even if you weren't in full penetration, you ignore his armor. I I would so like to I just like I, charge him and then cut him like cut his head like this and then he just topples over. You know, just like power axe right through the head. And just, are you remember the thing where he just axes? stays there for a bit and then <laughs> then slides. The body doesn't know that he's dead yet. <laughs> Pa power axes have the energy keyword as well. Like that's not it's not oh, just right. um cutting so it's, it's heat. Yeah. So yeah. I feel I need I need to actually get the critical thing for this because it oh, may be yes. a lot of the really high criticals can actually change the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well. yeah, yeah. I forgot. You can like so, demoralize enemies and all sorts of shit. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um when it was like, hey, you can have a free power axe, I was like, yes. It was like fuck, I didn't know I need to have the flaming head shark ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Uh, let's see, where is it again? Um, it's the one thing in this book that's always hard to find. Well, I just go to the oh, index, yeah. the bottom. So, 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 Nero, why don't you start taking your next action while I while I find this? I think Nero's glorious. gonna say something, but he's saying it as he's moving and firing at the same time. Yep. Oh, he's dead, so I can just move right there without engaging him. Yep. All right, so is this yep. a set of boxes and containers I can either fire over or fire around, like use it for cover? Yeah, you can fire, but you can use it as cover. Exactly right, and fire right. around it. Then Nero's um, gonna... <laughs> he's gonna do the heavy weapons guy Oh, my thing. God. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's... Can I quickly say, so this is uh, superheated by the attack. The target's brain explodes, tearing apart his skull and sending flames, hunks of meat flying to uh, those nearby. The target is no more. The, the entire body catches fire and runs off headless, 2d10 meters in a random direction. Anything flame <laughs> or passing, including characters, must make an agility test or catch fire. Oh my god, that's beautiful. I love it. Terrible. We're the ones standing right next to him. <laughs> well, no, it's a random direction, okay. so we got to see what direction we're going. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to roll a d8 with north being one. Yeah. Oh, scared so. or die. This is why grenades are dangerous too. Because um, if you throw a grenade and you miss, it's still going to land two. somewhere. So he runs this way and then crashes into the wall and, and collapses in a heap and dies. Nice. Well, he's already dead by the time he gets the wall. <laughs> That's funny. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I interrupted your turn, Arthur. Please no, keep going. Uh, I interrupted. You're exploding a man to death. Uh, Nero is going to fire while moving. In a way yeah. that only a suspensored heavy bolter can do, <laughs> just spraying people <laughs> down with bolter fire, uh, firing at the one who shot at him, who I've convened. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's correct. From cover. He's saying something to Cyrax, but it can't be heard oh. over the trigger held down heavy bolter fire. Yep. So it is a minus 10 for his cover. Okay. Yep. Otherwise, uh, you. Um, so you, you, I so... am plus 20. Yep. Cyrex has the built-in, like, uh, I have a pair of headphones when I go to the range that, you know, they're electronics. They dim down the blast. It's like everything just goes, it's all muffled while you're firing. I can't hear shit. Yes. Three degrees of success. Um, and I'm going to have to hit each of them then, right? I have four yep. shots that hit. Yes. So two hits him and two hits the guy beside him. Yep. Okay. So, so the first, the first one does the damage of twenty three against the first guy, twenty explosive. Okay. Um, I was going to say that the other guy. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to say the other guy is actually out of out of sight because he's behind. Very well. The, the thing. Um, but the other guy is close enough. He's within five meters. Oh, yeah. yeah you, so you could hit this guy up here, the one. There. I thought it was within two meters, but oh, sure. you're right, within two. Sorry. Yes, it is. Then I'm just going to hit this guy four times. Cool. There's going to be okay. nothing left of that fleshy meat pulp. 
Well, so now that, that'll take him to a minus 10 explosive in the leg. So the leg explodes in an eruption of blood, killing the target immediately and sending, t- sending tiny fragments of bone, clothing, and armor hurtling in all directions. Anyone within two meters takes 1d10 plus two impact damage. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fuck you, guy. If the, target is, if the target is carrying any ammunition, it explodes, dealing 1d10 plus five <laughs> impact damage to anyone within 1d10 meters. Um, so... <laughs> So he's carrying kind of ammunition. So two D ten plus whatever. So yeah, this so this guy here will take two D ten plus seven, and just quickly roll a D ten for how far the explosive radius of the. Um, you want me to roll the two D ten plus seven, or you got it? Yeah, you you, you do that. I just rolled the yeah. D ten to see how far it goes. As this is That's happening, amazing. I'm going to keep glancing back at Gareth. Cool. Garth, like uh, you know, this is what happens when you don't tell me how you want to die. This is also something to keep in mind. If you ever see dudes hucking grenades or something, make sure you kill them away from us because this shit can backfire okay. real quick. So this guy is killed by that explosion as well. Yeah. And then the guy up here will take 1d10 plus 5. So he essentially takes a bolt around. Well, of <laughs> splash oh, okay. damage. My, minus his uh, 5, so he takes 7 wounds. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Whenever I stop to release the trigger for a moment, I just look at Garth and give him a very knowing PC glance. Like, that could be you, you know. Make okay. choose choices wisely. <laughs> I say it, I'm just like, choose where you'd like to be shot wisely. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy moves four, double move one, two, three, four, five, six. Is your, this guy moves one, two, three. When he four, does that, five, I make I, I just go like I'm blind, you idiots. I can't see what you're doing. So because I can't hear Cyrex thinks you're talking to him, so he just gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> right. they, they appear to be fleeing. Uh, so it is now uh, Pierre's turn. Am I in range to take a shot at one of them? Yeah, you are. 30 meters, you should be fine. I'll, I'll attempt to make an aim shot at one of them as they're fleeing. Because yep. why not? Yep, plus 10 for being aimed. Uh, where'd, where'd it go? Shooting people in the back just like your mum. <laughs> wow <laughs> look you can like fight fair you can fight to win right should look better doing it so the, yeah. the, injured, the injured one or the uninjured one uh the uninjured one okay just while we're in whatever i will oh, ooh, that's a fail i would like to blast over the box of the box and go when the enemy offers open battle take it and make it his final mistake Cyrax, sorry, uh, Garth, Garth first, Garth. Oh, I second. All right, um, I'll uh, I'll take an aim shot at the injured one. Okay, plus ten. Just my brain. Hey, that's hey. a critical, critical so failure. Your gun is jammed. <laughs> Ouch! Yikes! <laughs> hey, at least oh, but a it's still automatic. It never Under. jams. No, so stub 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 automatic or stub? Oh, that's you got the you got the best quality one, don't you? That's right. Yeah. Yep, never jams. Yeah. Yep. Never jams. Okay. I'm, never I'm good. jams. Okay. Okay. Cyrax. <laughs> See, leave it to me to roll hundred on a D hundred D one hundred. Hey, at Incredible. least you don't have a plasma gun, dude. I mean, it could be worse. Sure. Let's see. So Oh, I can only charge 12 meters. I like eject the failed round and see there's like wine stains on the primer. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even? Uh, it off, everybody. I'm going to move to see what's my. So a full is a full walk both or is it half walk is half. Uh, it's, sorry. Uh, so, so if you do your full move, it's the double. So you remove six meters okay. on a full move. So I'm going to I'm going to move four, yep. switching back shoot. to switching back to my plasma gun as I do so. Yep. I and would then, like to point out that not only did I roll the worst possible roll on my so attack so die, sorry. I sorry. also I rolled the worst possible roll on the damage die as well. Wow! I got a hundred on the D one hundred, and I got a one on the damage die. And then I'm gonna blast this dude with a plasma gun because I don't care if he's running away. It's a one in a thousand chance, dude. It's life is forfeit. Come on. That's par Oof. for the course for me. Hit him. That is 10 pin six. 10 pin six. So the guy was the uninjured guy, was it? Uh, the guy, uh, that guy. That one, okay, cool. All right. So, and I uh, hit him in his 34. 
Is it the torso? Okay, so, so it doesn't matter because the penetration gets through his armor. So he will take seven damage. And that'll be my turn. Okay. I'm a fighty tech Back priest. To Nero. Uh, Nero is going to do a tactical advance on two, three. Or move in front of Cyrex temporarily just so he has a clear line of sight to these guys without any intervening cover uh, you know heavy bolter in front of them moving like this and he's not going to let these guys go just to be clear okay, uh, no worries. Full oh, I'm all fire. about it, I'm all about it I'm fully in support of you, we're like leapfrogging right now, let's kill them kill uh, so I'm back to plus 30 plus 30, yep Okay. N Nero in the Cyrax are going to be best friends. Wow! I can't <laughs> believe I missed this. Holy just, cow! A ninety-two. Wow! You just barely missed it. Too. You burn a fate point to reroll. That's a uh, good. I'm, yeah. No. no well, I mean, no. I don't have to burn a fate. You, you spend a fate point. Spend to a fate point. Right? Spend a fate point to reroll. Yeah, you yeah. Get, you so get these, it back. Sorry. Yeah, in the session. Yeah. yeah. So, and we're nearing the end of the session. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and reroll that. Yeah. yeah this, just, this is literally the last scene of the session. So. Just the D100, I right? About this fate point thing. Yeah. I was wondering yeah. how good last time. Yeah. Yeah. Holy fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fuck. 93. Worse. Somehow got worse. Fate is not on your side with this attack. The fates have decreed it to be so. I mean, they're just right. watching fucking rockets go sailing past the whole hailstorm of rockets. So the guy in the top corner manages to get out through the top door. Um, these two get as far as the way out. You can get basically one more shot at them before they before they're out. So, Pierre, oh, is it back to me? Yes. Yep. I, I can get one more shot in. Yeah, before they before they're out of sight. Excellent. I'll give it a shot. Uh, I'll take an aim shot and yeah. hope for the best. I mean, you don't lose anything by shooting. Respect, apparently. I mean, even to be fair, even in the books, it's just like a hail of Burn it's just a point. like a storm of fire, Burn and like point. one guy spend hits somebody. Spend a fight point. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's the fuck. Still, still a miss. <laughs> <laughs> I did, again did slightly worse. Okay, God. All right, I'll I'll see if I can bring one of these guys down. What are you are they both injured right now, or, or is there still one? They're both injured. They're both, they're both on 5 or 12 right now. You know what it said? This is the time to use some mind bullets. Just get yeah. in there. It's, it's, an, it's an aimed shot. Yeah. They're too far away from the mind bullets. We're, we're, we're having a Stormtrooper aim moment right now. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to... I mean, mo most... Point. Look, we're, we're, we're just being true to the that. cannon. 99% of your shots are going to be misses. That's how it works. It's just a bullet storm. Accuracy by volume. Yeah, this isn't how Nero like, yeah, like lives his life, though. He's not used to missing. It's no. Impossible. Nero's like, I had a 10% chance of missing. <laughs> and I did it twice. I've heard of this in the litany of XCOM. <laughs> it, it, it's guys. funny. It's actually funny to say it's like Vietnam, considering Cyrex for the Katachan jungle fighters, right. which is space right. Vietnam. Fate is not on my side either. Wow. So. Wow. All right, so I'm going to, well, can I shoot past? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nero? All right, I'm going to take a aim. Mm -hmm. And then, because I got 90 meters of range, I'm going to shoot at that guy again. Because uh, if I hit him, he is dead AF. So, plus gun. Almost clicked bolt gun. would be the wrong one. So, aim is plus 10. Plus 10. Plus 10. Oh, I'm gonna reroll it. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I mean, you might as well, right? It's, everyone gets lucky right the last five seconds of the combat. Uh, uh, that is. That's enough to hit. Should be yeah, because you should. Because one degree of success uh, from one degree of success. Yep, it is because okay. fifty-three would be a number. Cool, that's All it. Right. So damage was uh, ten pen six. Correct. So he will get to take down to seven. So that puts him on. So was it the, the top, top guy, guy was it? Here, the guy already okay. took seven. So okay, so he's on. He's basically out on. Like he's unconscious. He's on negative two. Um, so he's Small alive. Lines. He's he's, a, he's alive, but but unconscious. All right, and then Nero. Yeah. The wrong day. He's alive but unconscious. That means we can question him. Correct. Uh, Nero is going to fire full auto again. Right. I'm, I'm really a little low on ammo. To questioning but... someone. <laughs> 
Uh, you yeah, know. that'll work. Oh, He's just six degrees. Yeah. I'm not going to shoot the down guy. I'm just going to hit this guy over and over again. Yeah, nice in fact, so that's, that, so that's that's an arm shot. So you've got arm, body, arm, body, head, body. So, <laughs> uh, so with my movement, I'm going to go to like fucking stormtrooper chase this guy down that ran away. Like I'm shouting yeah. like, get back here. Oh, the, the ones that went to the north? The two yeah, the, the one, north. only was, one guy got out, right, to the north? No, because there was a guy yeah, There was a guy that ran when oh, you... Oh, yeah, no, I'm chasing... Yeah. I'm definitely trying Both to chase him down. him down, 100%. Okay. I think he's gone. Well, we'll cover, we'll cover that, uh, I think, next time, because that's a good place to end the session, Very I think. well. Nice. I think I'll probably scream something like, Stop in the name of the Hand of Calixis! <laughs> Ooh, plus that even tonight. Yeah. And I get to try and invade someone's mind. Yep, that'll be weird. Can't wait for you to fail that. Yeah, <laughs> nothing like a li- nothing like a little bit of torture to really bring the crew together. Uh, James, I have a question about ammo. How do I reload my gun? I don't you take a reload have, action. I don't appear to have spare ammo on my character sheet. So anytime That's you create the... a character, it's, just, it's assuming you have two full reloads for any gun, any gun you've got. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, you just and then like between you... sessions or anytime I stop by, like you an army. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And you just declare reload to reload in combat like uh anything it should as i'm running like, to chase these guys down i'm reloading in the process well, it'll, t- it'll tell you what your like if your reload is a half or a full it's a full action yeah so yeah. you'd have to stop and reload. no shit now there are like if you were to have the heavy reload bolt later then i definitely want to shoot well, these guys first like if, the, if you have the the backpack feed for the heavy bolter you have i think you don't have to take a reload oh, that's action right i could just i could just just yeah. leave the heavy bolter behind and shoot these guys with my other guns. Does anyone re- remember the film Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man? And I've never even no. heard of this. Sounds like vaguely it was, familiar. It was an action movie from the late 90s, and there was a scene in it where they're having a debate in a gunfight over whose gun costs more to fire based on the cost of the bullets. Like how, how many how many people someone's killed with a 38 versus with a with a machine gun where it's you know they're blowing off you know a, a buck around pretty much and hitting nothing. I feel it's the same with the heavy bolter. You spend it, you put a lot of money downrange <laughs> to kill a few thugs, but anyway. I mean, he's firing 75 caliber rocket propelled grenades, essentially. Listen, we need to make a name for Lord Captain Pierre Kals. You can't just run up on his bitch ass and try to stab him, all right, with eight dudes. Obviously, we clear the place out. Maybe we leave one alive to spread some stories, you know, Black Pearl style, but. Other than that, we leave alive, but we take a finger so he never forgets. <laughs> uh, James, do we get any experience or anything? Yes, fate resets. Three, 300 XP and yeah, fate resets per session. So nice. So at the very bottom of your sheet, there is an experience points thing like D&D or anything else. So you can. Uh, keep Let me ask you one quick thing about, about experience points. Uh, so this is something that I house rule I want to run for you guys. Um, so what your rank is, is dependent upon how much XP you've spent. So mm-hmm. a base starting character has is considered to have spent 5,000 XP. 4,500 was character creation, and then 500 was the points you had to spend. You go to rank two once you've spent 7,000 XP total, so i.e. 2,000 more than character creation. But the book Into the Storm says that XP you spend on... Um, the different uh, life path choices doesn't count towards your XP spent, which means that, for example, if you spent 350 XP on life path choices, you're effectively 350 XP behind yeah. leveling up at the right time. I'd be 450 I, behind. Yeah, I house rule that to say those points still count towards, and I think they do it just so you don't have a situation where a character doesn't buy low rank advances they need to get the higher rank stuff later on, because you still go back and buy it then. But I house rule that, so it's up to you. I'm happy to house rule it for you guys as well. I mean, use the Excel sheet. I can tell you how to how to do that in the Excel sheet. But the way you, the way you're talking about I mean, the way you're house ruling, it makes more sense because, like for example, one of the ones I buy, I mean, half or most of those XP points is because like it gives you ambidextrous, it gives you, you know, nerves of steel, whatever. Those are just things that you talents you could buy anyway. It's just you know there's some flavor behind it more or less. Um, I mean. Obviously, had the fact that it would put me 450 points in the hole, I like the way you do it better. <laughs> but I don't know how everybody else feels about it. Uh, is is buying a characteristic advance a plus five? 
Yeah, so plus yeah. five per card review. Okay. But remember that if you've already bought it once, the next one costs more. It, yes, it goes up in cost each time. Yep. Yeah, it's like I'm 100, a, 250, or I should tell you, actually. 65 ballistic skills, so 95 <laughs> when I'm not moving. Yeah. That, that, that 93 hurt you, didn't it? It, it really hurt listen, you. Listen, I was, I was ready. I was ready to start spending money on other skills, and that... Oh, that just, burns. It burns just, deep inside. Just, just wait. I'm gonna get it too. I have an effective uh, six, was it sixty or sixty-five intelligence roll or a uh, tech use roll, and I'm gonna fuck that <laughs> so bad. I mean, I it it's however people want to do it. I mean, it's I, I think of it. It's, it's, still it's not X, as bad XP as rolling XP. a perfect hundred and then rolling minimum possible on because you're spending you're spending that five hundred XP too. either way, right? So I mean, what is it? I don't know why it wouldn't count. My idea, listen, I, I Connor Hughes this really bad. My idea for Nero was kind of like this wise monk. He doesn't talk that much. He's respectful. And I feel like I spent the whole and session. All of that. Right you would want to talk to well, every single person. I, well, I feel like I was trying to, as the stream host, like give people a chance to do some color and stuff. And now I'm just like, oh God, Nero has as many lines as literally everyone else can buy. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. It's, no, it's you're kind of, doing fine though. It's kind of cool is the fact that AP is not hosting. Is I I had an entire thing with James that I was doing at that, co that table conversation that none of you know about because you're not tech priest and you couldn't tell I was doing it. I mean, I saw you roll. You made a tech use roll, uh, and I didn't want to say anything out loud. But, but I was what? like, I know you're for doing what? secret shit with James. Just... Hey, look, you don't have access to some of the same stuff I do. You don't know what I'm doing. That's fine. Look, we uh. know as players that you are not loyal to Cal's. You're just loyal to wanting to get that Archaeo tech. Um, well, hey, look, Adeptus Mechanicus. You're on the side Adeptus Mechanicus than everybody else. But it is kind of cool because then people can't see it on stream either. So, but when it comes to the point to reveal it, it'd be like, ha ha, whatever. It's kind of cool. So, like so how do you guys feel about that then? Good. I think it was pretty good. We had a lot of a lot of a lot of talky bits, and uh, I feel like I'm a we, setter in volleyball. We we picked we picked on picked on the sit a little bit. Um, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it it you're the you're the psyker. It's pretty normal for people uh, i to couldn't get sid to the all important um elevator scene unfortunately <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he had to repair the elevator <laughs> it falls out of it he does that was the reason why the uh tech use passed because it wasn't used on the elevator <laughs> it was the alcohol that's what i needed it for <laughs> like aerospace pilots and battle tech shows yeah i it's, it's pretty good for i mean with first session i think it went pretty well everybody's kind of Picking up other characters, go. Yeah, sorry about the tech issues. I mean, ah, I mean that's it's out of your control. This shit happens. Thank you for uh, getting in there and trying to fix them. You know. Yeah, I was literally running yeah. at one point five megabits a second my internet for a yeah. little while there. Yikes! Yeah, <laughs> I figured it was an Australia thing because I don't even you know, know what that is. <laughs> Can you go that slow on the internet? Yeah, yeah. it's oh, about yeah. the heart speed. <laughs> yeah, I have to. Well, I have still to... like fifty times faster than dial. <laughs> I have to purposely on our router, I have to put like a limit or I have to keep myself cap my usage or else I'll just suck all the bandwidth up. And so there's other people in the house that need, you know, Netflix and blah, blah, whatever. I got to leave them some band, <laughs> some bandwidth. But yeah. Listen up, it, Mr. 56K. You once, there was a time where one could play World of Warcraft on 56K. I, I remember I was playing MechWare 4 and mechware 4 mercenaries on a 56k modem so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i remember so, i mean yeah on like, the zone when i was originally playing oh dude microsoft zone man yeah. sid no. i was also giving me the star wars galaxies no. on mm -hmm. dial star wars well. galactic battlegrounds man it was a star wars age of empires clone it's so good i remember so, microsoft zone so the first time i went downstairs my son was playing raid and i kicked him off that and said you had to find something to play it doesn't involve the internet and then he was using YouTube next. And so I said, so I <laughs> and then when I yeah. went down the next and he was playing Roblox. It's like, play, like, a, play an actual, like play an actual. Yeah. It's, it's been seeing a bunch of stuff. People like, Oh, the gamers are using up all the bandwidth. It's like, uh, let me introduce you to uh, the fact that what I do in a week uses less bandwidth than you do in a couple of hours. It's like, shut up. Stupid people are stupid, but you know. it happens though. I mean, it's technical difficulties. I mean, it's, it was inevitable. Mm -hmm. Fourth degree interdimensional warp fuckery. Let's just blame it on that. 
every time I tried to run the music, it just it failed because of that. So I heard it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah. it as well. That's fine. It happens. Uh, it might fail on your end, but it should play perfectly for us because it's run through Rule Twenty, not through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was taking my bandwidth to stream it into me as well. Ah, uh, uh, yes, of uh, course yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. I, I got you. I got you. Uh, what do you want to do, James? We're doing outros. That's it. Yep. Do you want to do them? You want to try it, or do you need me to? No, 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 Kevin. I mean, this is your show. Is it? <laughs> It's Hello. right there with the uh, beneath the title. Your name's right there. Oh, that is true. I mean, hi, I'm the Atomic Warsmith. It's twitch.tv slash Atomic Warsmith. You can find me there where I play games. I need to finish Doom, but I'm a lazy shit. I got a bunch of blood angels I have to assemble and paint now. And uh, you can find me here on Wednesday nights for a new game plus. You can find me here for Saturdays for this. This is going to be really fun. People seem to enjoy my tech freeze. We'll see how long I can keep that voice up for. Um, and then you can find me on Sundays at uh, on Pondo's channel for the 5D Gestalt game. We're tracking down another flying demon thing. That'll be fun. How you doing, Sid? Just, I'm doing all right. You know, it's, I had a lot of fun with this game tonight, but I'm still I'm still definitely not 100%. And even though this was an extremely sedentary task, it still kicked my butt. So while I do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SidAlpha, where I do video game industry commentary and news and things like that, um, I obviously will not be getting any videos out there until I'm better because just sitting here talking wore me out. So yeah, there's the better, my dude. My eyes feel like literal sandpaper right now. <laughs> what about water. Pondo? Yeah, I'm Pondo. I do some things and some stuff, uh, either with Battletech or previously on our uh, Wrath and Glory escapades or uh, doing board game cult and or Pokemon with APs, other stuff. I also do the thing for uh, Hunters of Alvern tomorrow uh, or Sundays at 8 p.m. where they will be fighting some winged creature, not not anything demonic. Well, a, 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 that, look, at whatever. We don't, you know. It could be demonic. I'm, it, I'm it, it's to... it has like bat wings. Like I don't know where else to go with that. The size of a dragon. It's demonic. Whatever. What, could yeah. be a giant bat. It could be a giant bat. <laughs> we already fought a giant demon dragon. So I mean, I'm just assuming this one's you know similar. Whatever. I'm making this stuff up, man. You don't know what's going to happen. Dude, that's great. <laughs> I'm all about it. But uh, that's about it. AP. I am a person that exists. Uh, YouTube comments. You got what you asked for. Me as a player. Uh, uh, you, I, you got exactly what you deserved, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, my objective going forward is to win a best supporting actor role <laughs> rather than best director. So let's see if I can. I can nail that position. I didn't know that Nero and Cyrax would work so well together. <laughs> yeah. they, well, I, I feel like Nero's estimation of Cyrax has risen incredibly since the very first scene. Well, he's very much a um, <clears throat> exploratories are chosen for that role because they are more they're odd ones out. They're more individualistic. They're like they're not like your book learning type of tech priest, the so kind of the hands-on and or fighting, you know, whatever yeah, they get it, they get stuck in. They're street style, not, not, not book smart. Yeah, that's why they're chosen for that role. So, and he, he, I wanted to do that he had served as an engineer first with a guard unit. And then that's where, you know, he's, it was in combat and everything else. So it, it kind of works out that he's a, he's a fighty boy. Um, I just didn't want to do like a, oh, standards, stay in the back you know only fix things read books tech priest because i've been i've done it before i've read of explorador builds where they're like yes i get three melee attacks with different oh, yeah, arms no. and you can make them I do super like 50 dangerous points of melee. damage i feel like that might be where cyrax said it uh i've i've, I've done that i did i haven't done that before i've done a really shooty tech priest um melee it can be very rewarding if you get in stuck in but it can also get you in a lot of trouble really quickly so eh, we'll see how it goes. I'm not really going one way or the other at the moment. My ballistics and melee skills are kind of close together. I haven't really diverged either way. So we'll see. I mean, I did get a free power axe. So 
Yeah, but I yeah, like I should get it's, better at stabbing people. It's uh, it's good that you get along with the tech priest in uh, session one. It doesn't take him forever. Plus, I maintain your bolted for you, you know. So the other thing I want to throw out here to the cast is if we should start taking secret tongue rogue trader, just so that we can mm -hmm. all combat speak to each other. Yeah. Without being like, all right, I'm gonna advance and move over here. I and think then I have that already. Yeah, no, that's, that's like a lot of inquisitional teams do that too. Yeah. Let me. So I might seen, have um, that already. A house rule that I've seen that I haven't used it before, uh, but I've seen it used in other games that I thought was quite good with Secret Trang Road Trader is because it can be quite a thing to wait for two people to both have it at the same time. Is yeah. to say that if somebody's got it, they can communicate concepts to the rest of the group using that language that so the other group doesn't need this that skill to translate. They just need that to be able to transmit. You can receive without it, but you can't you transmit. You understand you have that the hand signals yeah. even if you aren't yeah. capable of yeah. making them yourself. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. No, okay, I've got Technolinguist and Explorator and Logo. Okay, I don't have... I thought I had the other one. Okay. James. I have High Gothic and Low Gothic, so I'm sorry. All right, Mr. High... I don't have fucking High Gothic. I mean, if you, were, if, you, if you were all worthwhile, you'd all have Technolinguist and we could just speak in binary camp. Listen to motherfuckers, know. I have Low Gothic, and that was good enough for me in three wars, okay? Oh, I know. <laughs> speak the secret language of the military. When you can get on that level, we can talk. I mean, I have pure military, so uh, <laughs> you and I could actually probably <laughs> sign language to each other. <laughs> like we probably can, like you know, battle, battle, like kind of like a Stardust battle sign. We got the, the hand signals and the all that stuff. We could probably yeah, of course, do check that. Check my you five and I. by five. Uh, what's I mean, my that's, twenty? That's a, your five by five is November a radio communications thing. So you know, loud and clear, especially what that means. But yeah, hey, you get you. That, that that opening scene with the major. So I could have just totally organized with atomic I, what was actually said and we could have said I, zero yeah. one back to each other it would not have gone well for the audience or anyone listening <laughs> it, what it what would have been really funny is you and i were just going bird, bird, bird. and but you and i have already had the conversation so we know what's going on we're like following us that would have been fucking hilarious i did i love that intro though the, the, i love that it it's so is great my it's really serotonin good. levels <laughs> yeah it all right good. james it's your outro addiction thank you i am james the grimdart podcast grimdartpodcast.com check us out there is some stuff happening with the podcast this week so watch this space to see what that is about i had a great time tonight i love running games i love rogue trader uh, i look forward to getting you guys back to the table next week um, please support the channel, Twitch Prime or Arthur's Patreon as well, patreon.com slash APGamingReal. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun and a lot of great shows on Arthur's Network too if you're coming here for the first time. All right, James, thank you for that self-promotion of myself rather than yourself. I put his podcast in. Are <laughs> uh, we good for next week? Fuck yeah, yep. dude. All right. It's great. I like we'll, it. We'll be back next week then. Have a good night. Wish fire noises. Is this set to fire? No, it's not. All right. No fire noises. Sorry. You need a, you need a rope trailer.